Welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. I'm your host, Taylor McWaters. Here are the top 10 unsettling space discoveries that prove we are not alone. Kicking off the list at number 10, Wasp 96B. Okay, we have to talk about some James Webb goodness in this list, of course. NASA just released a handful of photos from its $10 billion project. This telescope launched last Christmas and the gifts have finally arrived. And I'm terrified. We are so small in the universe. What is going on? In the cluster of photos, we see a giant exoplanet called WASP-96. And no, it is not full of wasps. I mean, I hope not. Who's to say? But it could hold secrets behind human existence. WASP-96 is a gas planet half the size of Jupiter, 1,150 years away from us. It orbits its star every three to five days, so I hope you love New Year's parties because you're going to have a lot of them. Thanks to our boy James Webb up there in space, Space, we can now see that there's lots of water surrounding this planet. Clouds and haze, says NASA. That's good. I'm excited for more water to be found in the universe, but I'm also nervous because, you know, more water means more fish and, you know, also f up aliens. Number nine, Kepler 1649c. Yeah, it's not all about James Webb today, okay? NASA's Kepler Space Telescope also discovered this one a while back, but while NASA was revisiting old observations in 2018 before, you know, retiring said telescope, they noticed previous computer algorithms misidentified it. And upon second glance, it's indeed an exoplanet. Yep, 300 light years away from Earth, it's a tad larger than our planet, and it receives a good amount of starlight. It receives about 75% of what our own sun gives off. Thing is, Kepler 1649c orbits a red dwarf, meaning solar flare-ups could prevent further life from evolving, which could be a good thing, could be a bad thing, I don't know. No aliens, please, thanks. Number eight, Ross 128b. I love the names for all these exoplanets. It's just like Jake 21a, you're like, okay. Potentially habitable, so much monster energy. Back in 2017, this exoplanet was discovered by Xavier Bonfils at the Institute of Planetology and Astrophysics of Grenoble. Now this one is 11 light years away from us, it's pretty close, and it only takes 10 days to complete a trip around its M-type star. The star is redder, cooler, and dimmer, so perhaps this planet could one day host life. Or maybe it one day already did. Who's to say? Either way. Don't want it. Don't want any part of these aliens. Number 7. Ice Moon. We're looking billions of years into the past, we're searching cosmic clouds light years away, but what about our own galaxy? What about our own solar system? What about our own moon? Could there one day be life on our moon? Back in 2018, NASA confirmed that there is surface ice on the moon's north and south pole. This was huge. NASA Mineralogy Mapper Instruments picked up ice traces near the darkest and coldest craters of the rock. There are three specific signatures that prove that there is 100% water ice on the surface of moon. Yeah, and we're talking about aliens whipping out of our oceans. Like, what's going on here? Something's, something's afoot. Number six, Loveland Flaming Thing. Nice, that's a good title. Imagine opening the newspaper back in 1957 and on the front cover you read, Leveland Flaming Thing Brings World Knocking at City's Door. That's alarming, that's a pretty crazy one. What does that even mean, right? Back in 1957 in Leveland, Texas, multiple eyewitness reports began to flood in about an egg-shaped object or this circular flash of light, something, something egg-like, jetting across Leveland skies. I just like saying Leveland, if I'm being honest. I'm trying to say it as many times as I can. I'm probably saying it wrong, it's probably like Leveland, but I'm gonna keep going with Leveland. One witness recalls the object making a loud humming noise as it flew by, which is different than other accounts that we've heard so far for, you know, UFOs. The egg shape keeps coming back in history, right? We've seen this in multiple accounts, but this is an encounter where it's been reported as loud with a great rush of wind. And on top of that claim, the witness's car radio began to go haywire. It was like, you know, it was like, in case you missed it the first time. The radio thing isn't too crazy. I mean, growing up, my computer speakers would always tell me if a phone call was about to come in. Felt like I was from the future. That was always odd. The Air Force also commented on it, saying that this was just a phenomenon caused by electrical storms. It was a ball of lightning, they say. Ball of lightning, back in 1957. Crazy, haven't seen many of those since. Number five, 2017 UFO. Ah, uh, I remember this one, because I was really scared. Not sure what was happening with the universe. Back in 2017, after the existence of the Advanced Aviation Threat Identification Program became more well known, a video was then released of an encounter between an F-A-18 Super Hornet and some sort of unidentified flying object. A UFO, or a UAP, sorry. We don't say UFOs anymore, now it's a 
UAP. There weren't a ton of details released about what exactly happened during this encounter because there weren't any details to provide, but the Raytheon Advanced Targeting Forward Locking Infrared, or I'll, <laughs> at FLIR if you're out of breath like me, they were able to capture an extremely fast moving white oval that was around 45 feet long. The oval had no wings and didn't appear to have any kind of exhaust either. They were tracking a UFO at the altitude of 25,000 feet just above the Atlantic Ocean. And then they were shocked because the craft rotated on its side and then just flew away. There was no explanation released with the footage because it truly is unbelievable and no one can figure it out yet. If you have any ideas, sound off below. All these mystery eggs floating in and out of our towns. Number four, Europa life. One of Jupiter's moons called Europa has a red tinge around it. And in 2001, NASA scientists revealed that it's possible that alien microbes may be responsible for said red tinge. The surface of its moon is mostly icy, but it has been shown that it reflects infrared radiation in a bizarre way. This means that something is binding it together, but researchers haven't been able to come up with the correct combination of elements and compounds to make this data make any sense. Know what I mean? There's some bacteria on Earth that can thrive in extreme conditions, some fish that have never seen lights ever and they're glowy somehow. The surface temperature might be too cold for them to survive, but the warmer interior might be where they're all located. Some geological activity on the moon could then push them closer to the surface where they then flash frozen in place. What a horrible way to go. Number three, Venus cloud. Back in September 2020, astrobiologists everywhere were excited, but also skeptical at some new potential evidence that had been found in the upper clouds of Venus. You probably heard about this, right? Firstly, can we just take a second to really think about how cool of a job it is to be an astrobiologist? To just be like, yep, aliens, let's do it. And then they plan a mission and then take off. Anyways, phosphine is very rare, and usually it's poisonous gas here on Earth that is basically always met with the presence of living organisms, right? So we find this gas, it's bad, but always connects with life. Venus hasn't really been at the top of the list for choices for finding potential life due to its surface temperature, of course, and pressure to the, you know, sulfuric acids and the clouds, and it's horrible and you can never live there ever, but this new evidence could prove to say something otherwise. Two separate telescopes were able to pick up the signatures of phosphine in a cloud that had a similar temperature and pressure to Earth, and while this isn't concrete evidence of, you know, space beings or bugs or anything like that, it'll at least be a reminder that we should be continuing to look for life or clues around life, know what I mean? Even in the most unlikely places, like Venus clouds. Maybe it's space bugs also, who knows? That'd be gross, space moths that live in clouds of phosphine. That would suck. Number two. Astronaut sightings. We could sit on Earth all day and talk about the potential for said alien life, but who would know more than the people who have actually been to space, right? I mean, who am I? I'm just a guy who makes YouTube videos. Ask the people who have been out there, which are of course astronauts. Ask astronauts. That'd be a cool website, ask astronauts. It probably is the website, actually. Definitely on the list of the coolest and scariest jobs in the entire world. There haven't been a ton of people who have had the you know privilege of experiencing space firsthand, but there are even less of them who have claimed to see something that could potentially prove alien existence. People who have claimed these sorts of things include Edgar Mitchell, Catherine Coleman, and Dr. Brian O'Leary. The very interesting part about many of these claims is that they will also include some sort of government cover-up as well with their claim. So it's always pretty juicy. There was also Buzz Aldrin, who spoke about his Apollo 11 experience, and he detailed the crew seeing something flying alongside them, but at first they believed it was the final stage of a detached rocket. But then Mission Control confirmed that that rocket was actually 6,000 miles away from them at the time, so there was no answers on what said flying object could have been. But they noticed it, as would you in a spaceship looking out of a window. And finally, number one, moon life. Titan is one of Saturn's many moons. Saturn has 82 moons, so if there's any aliens hiding near Saturn, we're never gonna find them. They have many places to hide. A lot of nooks and crannies to hide behind. A lot of moons to hide behind. That's a lot of moons. And around 10 years ago, NASA's Cassini spacecraft detected water under its massive shell of ice, which is really exciting. Again, like I said with our own moon, even traces of water is amazing, let alone this much. To quote a Cassini team member, the search for water is an important goal in solar system exploration, and now we've spotted another place where it is abundant. NASA has also detected low frequency radio waves on the icy moon, and it sounds pretty eerie. So we have radio waves and we have water. Sounds like aliens to me, my friends. As far as space mysteries go, anywhere that has water or signs of water, fish. Some sort of alien fish is hiding in there. Look at our own planet. Look at an octopus. An octopus changes colors while it dreams. Alien. 
I've been your host, Taylor McWaters. I'm not an alien, but I'll see you next time because you're definitely one for watching this video. Bye. <laughs> That's the last thing I'm gonna say. Alien, and then just leave. Abundant. That'd be a good name for a water product. No, it wouldn't, actually. That'd be a terrible name. Abundant, I'd be like, ugh. Abundantly clear? Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe. I just convinced myself otherwise. Like the Buzz all, like Buzz all, Buzz also? <laughs> That's Buzz Aldrin's cousin. It's Buzz also. Good thing I'm not bacteria. Actually, we are. We totally are. Humans are definitely bacteria.